Ever wondered why many software engineers never escaped the five-figure salary trap? After earning over $1.2 million myself and building $1 billion startup, it's clear technical skills alone aren't enough. So in this video, I'm going to give you brutally honest career advice that is so simple that you won't believe that nobody else is doing it. To start, let's talk about the harsh reality. The hiring process is fundamentally broken. Have you ever walked into an interview feeling confident, answered on the questions correctly, but didn't manage to finish the coding challenge on time and got rejected? Or maybe the interviewer asked you a simple question and your mind went blank. You are not alone. The truth is that most hiring managers don't have any clue how to evaluate developers. They rely on gut feelings, arbitrary time limits, and surface level signals. But that's even not the worst part. The saboteurs are software engineers' worst nightmare. You know exactly who I'm talking about. Those hiring managers who sabotage the hiring process to make sure that nobody more talented than themselves gets a job. They are afraid that you will outperform them and take their promotion. So they deliberately harm the company and vet less talented software engineers. Their goal is to eliminate the competition rather than hire productive employees. If you stumble across this sort of interviewer, you are doomed to fail. So don't worry, sometimes hiring processes feel like a morning walk through the war zone. Sadly, the process is rarely objective. Sometimes you are the best candidate, but someone else will get the job because they graduated from Stanford or have more impressive resume. That's why you need to learn how to play the game. So let me show you exactly how you do that. First, accept that interviews aren't always fair. You will fail some and that's okay. Don't take rejection personally. Sometimes it will be your fault, sometimes it won't. Second, prepare strategically. Yes, code editors like Cursor AI make you more productive, but they also make you forget the syntax. Before interviews, practice coding without AI. Use a basic code editor, disable autocomplete, and solve a few medium difficulty lead code problems. Choose problems that will require traversing arrays and hash maps. It will force you to repeat almost the entire syntax of your programming language. It might feel a bit tedious, but it's worth it. Third, at the end of the interview, you will be asked if you have any questions. That's your chance to stand out. You should ask the interviewer what project they are currently working on and what's their the biggest challenge right now. If you're lucky, you will have a solution to their problem or at least some insights that you can share with them. And that's how you become memorable. And maybe you will even find an ally who will vouch for you. Now you know how to improve your interviewing skills, but here is one brutal truth that you need to know about. You don't get to the top by merit. Back in 2022, the job market was fierce. My company couldn't hire any experienced software engineers, so we decided to offer paid internships. We opened the role to candidates across the United States and Canada, offering $8,000 per month for the entire summer. The plan was simple. Hire smart interns, see how they perform, and offer full-time roles to the best ones. I had the chance to interview freshmen from elite universities like Harvard, MIT, Stanford, as well as students from public American colleges. And here is what surprised me. The Harvard freshmen weren't smarter than students from public colleges. Actually, students from public colleges did stand out because they were motivated to work for us. Why? Because they didn't have 10 another job offers lined up. Freshmen from Harvard and MIT always rejected our offer because they got offers from Amazon, Netflix, Google. And the sad truth is that most public college students didn't even get the chance to interview at those tech giants. That experience changed my view on the software industry forever. Getting to the top is not about how good you are, it's about perception. Let's be honest, most people at early new universities didn't get there by being smart. Many got in because their parents could afford $60,000 per semester, and that gives them a massive head start. Meanwhile, if your parents weren't successful, you spend years just to get the chance to interview at big tech giants. The game is rigged, but here is the good news. You can outplay the system and let me show you how. So if you weren't born into privilege, you need to work extra hard to get ahead. And the best way to do so is smart offline networking. Go to meetups, conferences, and hackathons. 
but not just Atern. Get involved. Ask organizers if they need help. Volunteer to run check-ins, coordinate speakers or anything. I used this tactic by myself long before I applied to my first job and it changed my life. When you volunteer, you get a face time with influential people. And maybe one of them will offer you a job. Who knows? Remember, in a world where merit alone isn't enough, your network becomes your leverage. Now you know how to hug your way to the top, but here's the thing. The real money isn't made at trendy startups or Silicon Valley giants. It's made in boring and unsexy industries. I didn't land my first six-figure job at Google. I got it at an oil and gas company. They were about to launch an AI startup, but they couldn't hire engineers because nobody wanted to work for such a boring company. Most developers assumed we would be maintaining some 100 years old code base written in Java, but the reality couldn't be more different. We were building advanced AI models and had access to virtually unlimited resources. For example, we had access to $100 million high performance computer at our disposal. Meanwhile, what does the average dev at a big tech company do? They spend years building internal tools used by maybe 16 employees. Most of them never have a chance to touch customer facing code base. But my boring job as an oil and gas company? It turned into a golden ticket. The startup was partially acquired by Adnoc, UAE's national oil and gas company. Today, it's valued $1.4 billion, so I get to brag on YouTube that I help building the AI unicorn startup. Sometimes, the biggest opportunities are hiding in the most unexpected places. Don't write off an industry because it sounds boring. Because boring means overlooked, and overlooked means opportunity. And if you are wondering how I landed this $1.4 billion opportunity, watch this video next, and I will show you what I would do if I had to start my career all over again. I will share everything you need to know to land your first six-figure job, so feel free to click on this video right now, and I will see you there.